Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys our Atlantic Hurricane Outlook, our first one here. This won't be our final one, most likely, but I do have some initial thoughts for this upcoming hurricane season. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social medias. Now, for today's comment of the day, and I find this one very fitting, do you think we will have an above-average hurricane year or a below-average hurricane year? Let me know in the comments down below and I will pick one for tomorrow's video. Let's get right into things. So we're going to be looking at our El Nino and how that actually influences our hurricane season. That's the first thing we're going to go over here. I think that's very, very important. And it's actually the biggest factor that goes into our hurricane outlook here. So we're going to be looking at how an El Nino would impact the hurricane season. And the most important area here is the blue area to the right there in the Atlantic, because this is our hurricane outlook for the Atlantic. So fewer hurricanes during an El Nino due to stronger vertical wind shear and trade winds and greater atmospheric stability. So really what this is going to do is we're going to see winds basically heading in from west to east, and that's going to lead to the hurricanes really having to battle with this wind. Um, and, and that's really unfavorable for hurricanes. We've seen this in years past, and it's really led to below average hurricane seasons when we have an El Nino in place, because again, it just creates these hurricanes having to battle these winds the entire way uh, as they across the Atlantic. Now we're about to take a look at how a La Nina would impact the hurricane season. And actually I'm thinking a La Nina is more likely than an El Nino this year. So I kind of just gave away what I'm expecting as far as an Enso this year. I'm thinking probably we will be in a neutral phase, which means in between El Nino and La Nina. But I think a La Nina is more likely than an El Nino. Let's go ahead and take a look at how a La Nina would impact the hurricane season. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, we see in the yellow area for the Atlantic more hurricanes due to weaker vertical wind shear and trade winds and less atmospheric stability. So really, we would be looking at less of those winds heading from west to east that the hurricanes have to battle with. So really, it becomes more just about what kind of conditions the hurricanes have for development. Uh, and that's going to be the next thing we have to get into is kind of the sea surface temperatures and what we're looking at as far as that. Obviously, we know that hurricanes need warm water to develop. And if we see below average sea surface temperatures where they're lo looking to develop, then we see less development. But if we see warmer than normal temp sea surface temperatures in the areas where they develop, then we will see more favorable conditions for development for hurricanes, which obviously would lead to more of these hurricanes. And we know that we're going to have a neutral to La Nina, and that usually would lead to less trade winds that these hurricanes have to battle. Uh, so if they have above average development and below average winds they have to battle, that spells a lot of hurricanes. But again, I think we're more likely to be in a neutral, which is kind of more of a toss up. But if we go into a La Nina, that's a different story. And that's probably the reason I would have to update this video later on in a few months. Now we're about to briefly talk about where our El Nino Enso region is at right now. We're going to talk about if we're expecting an El Nino, neutral, or La Nina. Even though I've kind of told you guys my thoughts, I'm going to show you guys why. All right, and as you can see here, this is our what we call our T-depth anomalies. And really what this is is... At the top of the screen, that's right near the surface, and at the bottom of the screen, that's very, very deep down in the ocean there in our El Nino region. So you can see we have very warm temperatures there on the surface there for our El Nino region, but just below the surface and just below that yellow, orange, red region, we have a lot of blues, and that's all heading uh, up, 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 up towards the surface, and we, it's really going to be a toss-up of which one of these air or water temperature masses wins out is are we going to see these cold waters make their way to the surface or are we going to see those warm waters near the surface dominate and that's why we're in a really tough situation right now and it's really just going to be a half a situation where we have to just wait and see we're really leaning towards a neutral and so through the summer and fall months though i think we're going to be within that neutral uh temperature range uh let's take a look again right now at the surface map here so we can see our El Nino region is just there off of South America and we can see that there isn't really a lot of temperature anomalies right there near 
Um, the South America coasts there, we do see a lot of warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. And then as we head a little bit further out into the ocean, we see a lot closer to average. So we're near neutral right now. Uh, and here's another map of our current sea surface temperatures throughout the oceans here across the globe. And we can see that we do have some blues and some oranges and yellows there off of the South America coast in the Pacific. So we're looking at a neutral ENSO right now. Keep in mind that our Atlantic Ocean there has warmer than normal sea surface temperatures pretty much throughout the entire uh, North Atlantic there, which is going to be a key player here in our uh, hurricane outlook. So we're about to move on and we're about to zoom into the North Atlantic and give you guys kind of an overview of what's going on there and how that could impact our hurricane season this year for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. All right, so the first notes I want to take away from this for you guys is near the East Coast, we have the warmest temperatures there as far as sea surface temperatures, lots and lots of warm waters, and that's probably due to the warmer air that's been around for the winter time so far. Uh, that's really not cooled down the ocean enough, so we've seen a lot of warmer air persist in these regions, which is probably cool or warmed up the surface sea surface temperatures there. Uh, and then we see a lot of it for the Gulf and then areas south of Cuba, south of Haiti, south of Dominican Republic. Uh, that's areas where we're seeing a lot of warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. And that's an area where I'm expecting a lot of tropical development throughout our tropical season here. I think that's a very likely region to have some of the most activity there. And that's what we've seen in years past. There is a lot of closer to normal temperatures there uh, in our, what we call our main development region, which is in between Africa and South America, kind of. Uh, so we see that region with a lot of blues, lighter, lighter blues. That's where we start to see these storms develop a lot of times. Just off the coast of Africa, we have a lot of warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, very far uh, warmer than normal temperatures, but really it's more neutral throughout our main development region. Uh, so it's really a toss-up for that main development region. They're in the middle of the North Atlantic. Uh, it's it's going to be a difficult one to kind of predict how the development is going to be for those regions. So we're just going to have to wait and see with that. Here's our Jamstex sea surface temperature forecast, and this is for uh, our June, July, August, so kind of the earlier portion of the hurricane season. They have oranges there off the east coast for all of the Gulf, and then you can see for our main development region as well, so all of these areas above normal for the Jamstex. And then here's your September, October, November one, and we can see that there is, once again, a lot of warmer than normal sea surface temperatures from our main development region into the Gulf and off of the East Coast. So the Jamstex, as of right now, is thinking sea surface temperatures are looking favorable for our hurricane season here. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. The Jamstech isn't a perfect model. It does struggle sometimes, so I'm going to take this with a grain of salt. I'm more paying attention to where we're at right now, and then we're going to have to watch and see how that changes as we move forward. Here's another interesting one. This is our seven-day change sea surface temperatures. Notice there's a lot of warming there off the coast of Africa and then into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. That's our main development region once again. So in the past seven days, we've been warming up in this region. Uh, and then the Gulf has been cooling down a little bit. So obviously, if we get multiple weeks of these cooling and warming of temperatures, this can change a lot. And that's why I think I'm going to have to update this probably in June. Sometime around June could be my final hurricane outlook. Uh, but this is just some earlier thoughts. Obviously, there is a lot of um, valid points in this video. So this is definitely going to be um, things that we need to be watching right now. And they probably won't change too much. But some of these areas could change quite a bit for sure in the meantime. All right, now we're about to get into our actual hurricane season forecast here. I'm going to be showing you guys my current thoughts on the Atlantic hurricane season. All right, so as we take a look here, this is our first region. We're going to be talking about all three of these regions individually, but our first one is for our main development region there in that pink region. I'm going to go with a wild card. I think that this one could swing either way and we need to move forward a bit before we can give you a very accurate outlook on what, what the main development region is going to look like in the hurricane season. So I'm going to remain with a wild card. This one could be below average development, average development, or above average development. It could really swing either way. 
Now for our second region, I'm very confident that this red region will have above average tropical development. The sea surface temperatures look ripe for hurricane development, as well as if we get a neutral to La Nina. And so I think that chances are very high that we will be looking at above average development within that red region. Now for the purple region, I'm thinking as of right now that we will have near average hurricane activity along the east coast and then out in some some of the, you know, Atlantic Ocean offshore of the East Coast there, uh, and then also for the Bahamas. I think we will have near normal uh, hurricane activity this year. Now, for your comment of the day, uh, I asked you guys, what's your favorite fast food chain? Raymond St. Clair said, Five Guys, their burgers are the best, and I absolutely love Five Guys burgers. I could munch on some Five Guys burgers, and then the whole bag of French fries, ooh, it's just mouth-watering, especially their Cajun fries. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media, and I will see you guys in the next video.